here we have row. Okay, so this is stuff from last week. And uh, so I, I, or from the weekend after Friday to Tuesday. And I didn't talk about that on Tuesday because the stream ran on long enough. And we're getting there with this stream as well. So let's uh, hurry this the fuck up. And I'll try to get through this. It probably won't take too long. So um, Ralph put out a tweet. And he said, The A-logs were always my people. Glad many have forgave. I have in a bad way. I appreciate the support. People read this and assumed that Ethan Ralph is maybe on the bender again. Could it be? Uh, Ralph protests this and decided to reply to a couple of those a -lo a Oh, no, the A-log. He said always wrong is what he's building. Um, Big Flopaberry says, We only A-logged you to be better nigga. Why do you think so many were originally Killstream fans? Literally all the A-logs know every single part of Ralph's lore. It's sector nature to flip sides every once in a while, too. Total Ralph and L victory. Uh, Sludge Creature says, Are you for real? No one interesting goes on the Killstream. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a wall-to-wall -wall personal Ethan Ralph drama, which is excruciatingly boring. Huge disappointment that, that he blew this one. Uh, Ethan says, wrong LB, death emoji, snorting emoji, something emoji, bowling emoji, and cash emoji. Been mailed completely lies, and even if it was, Jess shouldn't be laughing, but Carr put these other meats in the shade, period. Cry more, punk. Uh, Ralph also said, Michael Alberto is king. Great kid and never did. Great kid and never on some bullshit. All Wiss liked him and want to see him flourish. Britt Nexel says he walked it back after watching the Lul Streamline tonight. Said the whole PC thing is sketchy. Uh, he says, well, I did it say, I think he looks stupid lock. Uh, it says, also says, it's really not, though. Power chat nicks no info. Only the streamers do. They will just switch to sometimes else. And then Ralph um, gets called drunk or on the pills for these. So he comes out and says, a certain cripple is saying I am fucked up, LOL. I am fucked up in a certain way because I lost my wallet when it was pickpocketed. Said that certain people are so sad and sick that they would try to make up lies. I hope people are seeing who the truly malicious people are. He completely denies it. And he also mentions that his wallet has been stolen yet again, uh, which means that he is two for two in visiting foreign countries and getting his wallet stolen, except for Italy, because he's only there for a couple of days. Uh, if he went back, he might. I mean, there's lots of gypsies in Rome right now. He could probably get that shit stolen pretty easy. And then he decided to do a 16 minute long video addressing Pansu and her father, Harry Morris. Uh, apparently, Pansu has made zero contact with Ralph over the entire uh, stint of their separation. And um, out of the 33 minute long live chat that he did on his uh, phone for X spaces or whatever, uh, this was the most interesting part. Not drunk. I'm not drunk and I have to be very sober to face down these demons. And even the other night, when I went head-to-head -head with Worski and PPP, uh, I defended her past lollicon advocacy. Which, by the way, I had to pull teeth to even get her to denounce that in public, if you want to know another truth. I literally had to, you know... I won't say beg, but pressure uh, her to put out that denunciation because she didn't think it meant anything. Well, that means a lot of things to a lot of people because a lot of people think you're a pedophile if you're supporting Lollicon and you have that on your record. And I realized she was with the real sick fuck and promoting whatever he was promoting. Uh, but those are the facts of the matter. You don't have me on record supporting Lollicon ever. Ever, 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 ever. But you do her, and you do have Harry Morris sitting in Cog's chat talking about uh, it's funny when Cog calls her a pedophile. There's no low the guy won't sink to, basically. And, you know, it's a tough situation because even now I still love my wife. Um, but that seems like a fool's errand, to be quite honest with you. That seems 
that seems very foolish. Uh, That's the big revelation that I want to share is that Ralph, uh, for the first time, said that he had to beg Pansu to denounce Lollycon. Um, so he's implying there that she's still on the lolly. She's still addicted to it. She's still imagining herself as the little girl or whatever the fuck. Um, little bit strange. Uh, a series of tweets that he put out also saying, um, the ass isn't that fat lady. And I've had more than my fill of it. Anyways, winky face implying, of course, that may, who is not quite Eugenia Cooney, but, um, very close with her masculine frame does not have the ass was not fat. And therefore Ralph is not interested and he's already had his fill anyways. Winky face. Um, these are all like kind of roundabout messages to, to, to may and Harry says that she doesn't even read these, but, um, Having to defend your lolicon degeneracy at every turn. You didn't deserve my spin. Anyone who liked that for any reason is sick in the head. Let me ask you this. What kind of mother would leave the hospital because it was taking too long to get a rape kit to prove their daughter got raped? The sickest kind, that's who. I guess I don't even know that story, but I'm assuming that that's a private thing that she told uh, Ralph, and Ralph is choosing to reiterate in public here. Harry says, I knew I should have had him autograph this. Um, I guess in reply, to, I think that is, that's the girl that got her face kicked in by a prostitute. I don't, I know her, but I don't remember her name. And then that's Pansu. So I guess they, they hate each other now or some shit. And Harry says that they should autograph this photo. Ralph says, sick, fantasizing about his own daughter. Par for the course. Maybe if you weren't such a loser, you would allegedly be left after your own daughter. Forever alone at age 55. Not even a lot. He's not lusting after them. He just wanted them to sign it together because that would be a rare signature. Uh, Ralph says, in regards to May, sorry that I saved you from a life full of troons and a childless existence. I guess what I get for doing charity work in the first place, implying that marrying may was charity work, which is very mean. Um, and, and your dear old dad threw you under the bus at every turn. I hope everyone is happy with the decisions they made. You two degenerates deserve each other. I hope everyone is happy with the decisions they made is a Nick Fuentes quote. That's what Nick Fuentes said about Ralph after he left, uh, the cozy. Does he know someone can love someone, try to prove anything and everything under the sun? Doesn't matter if you have Daddy Fat Buck's wallet to back you up and make you do what he wants. I never back down, you know, don't plan to start now. And then he threatens uh, Harry and says, Post that, you fat fuck. Monroe County, New York, hit me up. Not trying, not used to trying any longer. It's brainwashed central. I'm going to court. Threatening Harry with a lawsuit. Um... Oh, and this is a, a full explanation of the lollicon thing, which I will also read in Ralph voice. Keep in mind, I had to beg Amanda Morris to disavow her support of lala porn. She had claimed to already have stopped consuming it, and I took her at her word. But you can be the judge of that. I don't think many others would believe it, but I loved her at the time. I hope it was true. I messaged her for two months trying to hear about my daughter, who she abducted and took across an international border. I said nothing incendiary, did not try to locate her or any other ridiculous claim being made by her impotent father. I will not be returning to the United States ever. So come and get me, bitches. My residency renews for three years next month, and then it goes permanent after. Like I said, come and fucking get me. And unless Amanda apologizes for leaking my emails to her psycho father, they weren't that bad anyways, just lost my wallet and needed help, then I have no desire to speak to her again as long as I live. I'm taking Jesse Lee Peterson advice. I don't have any children until they turn 18 years old and reach out themselves. So there you go. A complete disavowal of Cozy Rosie, formerly known as Rumble Rosie. Um, pretty, pretty sad, actually. Harry Morris, um, Ralph sends him a text over Telegram saying, "See you in court, fat fuck. One day my daughter will seek out question, seek will, sorry, will ask questions about where my father is or where her father is. One part of me hopes you're not around by then. The other part of me really hopes you are." Harry says, "I will keep this channel open, as you know it makes me happy when you see, especially so intimately. Congrats on getting a full comms block from the other formerly interested party, though." 
Don't worry. When the time comes and she asks, you serve bravely in Ukraine. Uh, Harry of uh, positing the story that he will tell Roseanne Ralph uh, when she comes of age and asks about her father. Um, I guess to try and give her a more interesting backstory. Um, so Ralph, um, one of the things that Harry leaked was a poem, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, Harry says, roses are red. God, I fucking turned that off. How did that happen? <sighs> I don't know it anymore. Um, anyways. Harry says, Rose is a red, violets are blue. She's moved on, and now you should too. Off the rails again with the latest message you sent. No, we shan't help you. Pay your fucking rent. Now a public threat that she won't see, her Twitter deleted and her mind set free. On to your many other battles you go. And by the way, your mom was a special lady, he says. I assume so that you can fill in the blank with your with your mind. Um, Ethan Ralph says, I, I asked for her phone number, not any money. That's you that bribes her to do your bidding. You're really inspiring me to follow the necessary docs in New York to see my daughter, by the way. You think you keep your fucking mouth shut. You really want to be gone. But then again, you're not that bright. The poem that Ralph uh, is referring to is this one, which he read on stream to take ownership of it. Um, and I will let you be the judge. I will not opine. But here's Ralph reciting his poem to May to try and win her back. This is the poem I wrote to my wife about a month ago. I said, I don't know what to do or what to say. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. We must be separate for a while, but all I want is you to smile. Our love was great and grand and rough, but I know it made you tough. I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. And if... And if it already has been shed, I hope you'll remember when I'm dead that I really, really loved you so. I just didn't always know how to show. And uh, that was the poem that I wrote there. Maybe not my best work. I'm not a poet. But, um, but yeah, that, that's what I wrote, and um, I'm not ashamed of writing it, and I'll read it again without the music. I don't know what to do or what to say. I think about you every second of the day. If I should die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. We must be separate for a while, but all I want is you to smile. Our love was great and grand and rough, but I know it made you tough. I never want to let you go. Life has told me I have to, though. I really, really don't want to listen. The ring you wear, I hope, still glistens. And if already it has been shed, I hope you'll remember when I'm dead, that I really, really loved you so, I just didn't always know how to show. It. So, with um, here's my review of this poem. Um, I am convinced that um, and if I die before I wake, I pray to God your life be great. That seems plagiarized. In fact, um, there is a Kid Cudi song called The Prayer, which incorporates the Lord's Prayer in it, which is based off the funeral, which may also do the same. 
um by band of by horses something horses band of horses um that might be lifted from a rap song is what i'm trying to get to i don't know if that's true or metallica anyways um so the um i i am somewhat suspicious of just that part and then also there's a typo here he filled it in when he spoke it and if i and if already has been shed if already it has been shed um that this this is problem right here and if already it has been shed i hope you'll remember what i'm doing that is suicide baiting should not do that in a low poem um generally speaking writing poems to your wife is pretty pretty fucking romantic actually even if it's like not that not that great um but usually your poems would be incorporated into things that you do to maintain your relationship as opposed to things you do after your relationship has ended to resuscitate the relationship no i'm saying um the the i mean the, the malicious part here is the thing about how it feels kind of suicide baby and it's misplaced like she probably wouldn't have left if you wrote her poetry before um she wanted to leave you know that's uh that's my take on that now someone in chat pointed out that mr mediker uh criticized ralph poem and uh very vigorously made fun of it which is fair you can do that it's not that great of a poem however many people may not know this but jim himself is somewhat of a poet and has some merits in critiquing ralph's poetry so at the risk of um murdering jim um i will now read you some other poetry by a a young author known as jim 81 jim and maybe we can pull out yo dick and Ralph can pull out he is dick and you can put them dicks together to see which is bigger <laughs> poem number one first of many from jim 81 jim he says Please have fun with this. The first of many writings to be included here. Revise, re rewrite, edit, make it your own. Make it beautiful, make it real. Shows the nature of revisionist poetry right here. Unspoken, so I'm already breaking the rule by reading this aloud. So don't let this be representative. Uh, he writes, We make an arch with our hands, this union of one and one, through five to five, the awkward mathematics of love. In the field below the numbers, we sing music without words, which sounds so much like forgiveness for something we haven't yet done. But it is what we will do, no matter intentions. Imagine the flake snow touching the gilded tips of wheat. Beautiful in the cool sun, and oh, so deadly. And then also, poem number five from the Minnesota Writers Group. Uh, the author advises that he's changing it up, y'all. Not all poetry is nice and gentle and easy on the eyes and ears. Uh, this is called Curse. Um... She, call, she called it the F word right before she said fuck as if to soften the blow, to bury the curse, before it settled on my brow and curled my tongue into a reactive snarl. Mother, I said, did you forget your medication today? I like that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that one. <laughs> All right. So now that we know who's, who's dicks, is bigger is press one if you think that ethan ralph's love poem captures the essence of uh forgiveness and tribulation in a marriage press two if either of jim 81's gems poems uh are imaginative and creative expressions of of thoughts and feelings that surpass the love of ethan ralph um, I'm seeing, I am some, to be fair, I'm seeing some ones, but it, it appears that the sweaty squad is, is here in force. I mean, I like, the, I like to be fair. I like the curse one. Cause I like the, the joke at the end. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it for Jim Eddie one Jim. I think that he's, the, I think he's the better poet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully these, these being pulled up conjured from the either do not, uh, give a, our poor boy, a heart attack and kill him. I'd feel guilt. I would legit feel guilty. Not even numerals. That's right. At least didn't do a game rhyming scheme. Gen one. 
I, I, I'm partial to poems that rhyme. It feels like it should rhyme. If, uh, like, what's the point if it's not rhyming? These should go on his tombstone. <laughs> but maybe he'll write a, a new poem for the tombstone. Imagine knowing these exist. I don't have to imagine. I do, motherfucker. And now you do too. Oh, imagine being you. Imagine you being you and knowing these exist. Oh, oh, shit. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.